Hi, I'm Amelia Chesley, a graduate student at Texas Tech University, and this is a little bit of an overview of TEI. You've probably never heard of TEI. I hadn't until just a few months ago. The acronym stands for Text Encoding Initiative, and it's just one of dozens and dozens of custom XML markup languages, each developed for a very specific purpose to be used by certain groups of people. And maybe that's why nobody's heard of it. But if you are any kind of English major, whether you're focusing on literature or technical writing, the Text Encoding Initiative is something you might want to know about. TEI is the standard coding system used for creating and publishing digital editions and managing electronic versions of all kinds of literature. Novels, manuscripts, letters, poems, and plays, to name a few. If the future of literature and literary studies is moving in a digital direction, understanding where TEI came from and how it works could help you anticipate and shape that future. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how TEI got started and then look at a few examples just to get you familiar with what you can do with TEI. To start, let me explain that the acronym TEI can refer to two things, the International Organization of Textual Scholars or the guidelines for marking up and encoding text which that organization developed. The organization TEI was founded in 1987 in response to a huge proliferation of coding systems. Scholars wanted to set a standard coding system for digital humanities projects to make work in this area more consistent and less confusing. So universities, libraries, and other groups interested in the digital humanities came together to create the Text and Coding Initiative. The organization still exists today, often referred to as the TEI Consortium. The guidelines they developed are also called TEI. The very first TEI guidelines were developed and released in 1990. Proposal 1 of the TEI guidelines used an earlier markup language, SGML, or Standard Generalized Markup Language. In 2003, the guidelines were updated to be compatible with XML, Extensible Markup Language. The most recent version, Proposal 5, or P5 for short, was released in 2007. Just to be clear, I'm mainly going to use TEI to refer to the coding guidelines. Like any kind of XML, TEI is an extensible, customizable language for storing large amounts of information in an organized way. TEI can also be styled just like XML using style sheets. Pretty much any text editor could be used to create and modify the XML code. Oxygen XML Editor and XML Notebook are two common options. TEI is internationally recognized as a powerful tool for digitally preserving and displaying all kinds of data, particularly the literary kind. Like XML, the TEI guidelines are extensible, flexible, and customizable. So, if it's just like any other XML language, what makes TEI so special? Well, let's pretend you've got an old book in your hands, like this one. This book is one of a kind and full of interesting details. Maybe the cover is really unique, or the paper it's printed on has distinctive qualities, or maybe there are interesting markings all over it. What if you wanted to make this book digital to adapt it for a wider audience, or make it available to other scholars or students ar around the world? There are a few different ways of digitizing a text, and thinking about all the options might help us fully appreciate the power of TEI. Option one is to scan the whole book. This would give us a great reproduction of every page, but on the downside, high resolution images take up a lot of space and they aren't easily searchable. Option two is to transcribe the text. An image plus a transcript would be much more usable. However, a plain text transcription leaves out a lot of details. The formatting, images, and other material non-textual information of the book would be lost. Just think about the difference between a scanned image and a typed transcript. The image has a lot of visual detail, but it's not searchable. The transcript gives you clear searchable text, but without the formatting, structure, or context. This is where the Text Encoding Initiative comes in. 
Using code to mark up the book makes it possible to include more information than just the text itself. You can add formatting, context, and metadata in the tags. All the details that get lost in a plain transcription can be added with TEI. Since TEI was developed specifically for literary texts, its structure and vocabulary are well suited to this kind of project. So what does it look like? We'll start with a very basic example. Every TEI document includes a few basic elements. If you're familiar with HTML at all, you'll probably recognize this kind of tagging structure where a tag opens each section of code and another tag closes that section. All TEI documents open and close with TEI tags. The TEI header tags enclose the header portion of the document and text tags surround the main text. Now, let's look at a more detailed example filled, with out, filled out with actual content. Think back to the old book we started with and pretend it contains the story of Cinderella. See if you can recognize the basic tags from our first example in this code here. Go ahead and pause the video if you need more time to look. This example is still rel relatively simple. TEI is capable of a lot more. Using the extensibility and customizable nature of XML, TEI supports various templates or schema for encoding literary text. On top of the basic TEI guidelines, there are also more specific guidelines for prose, poetry, and drama. The vocabulary of these genres inform the tags and elements of the code used for each type of text. For example, a TEI poetry project might define its tags with terms like stanza, or couplet, while a prose project would use chapter or section. Since our Cinderella example is prose, one of our example tags here is designated as a chapter. Whether your project is prose or poetry, you'll use TEI to mark three main types of content. Textual content, or the words that make up the bulk of the book. Non-textual content, things like images or diagrams, line breaks, or formatting. And third, metadata, information about the book, like how much it cost, when it was published, or where it was printed. One of the hardest parts of TEI coding is figuring out what parts of text are most important and how those parts should be emphasized. The possibilities are endless. How you digitize your project depends on your purpose and your goals for that project. Let's look at one more example, this time a real live TEI project, the letters of Vincent van Gogh. Here you can see how these editors chose to display the textual content, non-textual content, and metadata of their project. This letter to Van Gogh's sister is displayed in four different ways, as a facsimile reproduction, as annotated hyperlinked text in Dutch and in English, and here they have included the line breaks as they appeared on the original letter. Then the notes section provides more. TEI, just like most coding languages, is something best learned by playing around with it. Now that we've looked at a few simple examples, how about you go do some exploring on your own? Start with the TEI projects page or the TEI by example site and see what else you can discover. I'll wait here for a few minutes while you follow the links and look around. Remember, you can always pause this video and come back later. Every example of a TEI coded document looks a little bit different, even though they all use the same guidelines. That's because the guidelines are meant to be customized. Here's a quote from the TEI Consortium. They say, the conclusions and the work of the TEI Consortium are formulated as guidelines. Each scholar must have the freedom of expressing their own theory of text by encoding the features they think important. The TEI guidelines are just that, guidelines, and they're a growing, evolving body of standards. As new technologies come along, there will be new opportunities for applying the TEI guidelines in new situations. Getting familiar with TEI now is one way to prepare for whatever comes next in the world of digital humanities. In case you want to learn more, and I hope you do, here is a list of resources you can turn to. I'll add these links in the description so you can find them there too. Thanks for watching and good luck.